Okay, take two, bitch. <laughs> okay, welcome back, everyone. We're back. We were abroad. Yeah. We were lost at sea. Yep. We were on an island. We were living on an island uh-huh. for a while. Uh-huh. It was great. Yeah, now we're back. Now we're back. And it's bad. And it's bad. Um, we went to Bermuda. Yeah. And saw some fish. We went snorkeled snorkeling. a shipwreck. Went to cup match. Cricket's the dumbest sport of all time. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Cricket, nobody, when you ask someone to explain to you how cricket works, it's kind of like there's this secret that you just make it up. Like It's like an improv game. I think cricket is a made-up sport, and they go, oh, well, you have the flick it, and you make sure not to give it to the wobbler, and then they take tea. Hurling at the... <laughs> uh, the bump the, it. Uh, yeah, the bump it. <laughs> and then... For the and match, then there's a tea break. The match and the lunch break. When and they have little sandwiches or something. match lasts for two days. This is like the Super Bowl of Bermuda. Well, this it is Bermuda, you know. For two days. It's different other places. Oh, right, right, right. Whatever. Because there's like 11 people that live there. For two days. Yeah. And at the end of it, they just declared a draw. Nobody won. Yeah. Well, not only did it only last two days, the actual games lasted all day. Yeah. From morning till night. Because they don't exert any energy. Yeah. So they can just... <laughs> well, I mean, that's why it's great. Yeah. Because it's, uh, like most things on the island, an excuse to drink rum. Yeah. Swizzled. And sit in, like, Harry Potter bleachers. That was really cool. Yeah. We were in, like, a VIP tent for visitors to the country yeah and we got free booze and pastries and pastries although eric was not ashamed at all to be like i'll have eight uh eight swizzles with an extra rum floater on all of them. he just like kept coming back yeah 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 he's out today <laughs> i'm like dude i need he just goes so hard i mean i don't know if i've ever done vacation that hard where it's like Every single second it's like the Olympics is accounted for. Of There's a Google Doc. <laughs> we're doing snorkeling. And as soon as snorkeling is done, we're taking a bus to a bar. And then when that's done, we got to meet with the owner of the Airbnb for charcuterie. And it's like on and on into the night, you know. And you're like, dude, give me a fucking second. The whole time, always with this little, you know, uh, cooler's <laughs> Filled to the brim with <laughs> rum, rum and, and ginger beer. Just like ed- every second, you gotta pour out half a ginger beer and fill it with rum, and or drink a swizzle, which I is mean, like a juice drink with rum. We complain, but it really was the life. No, I, it was great. I never had to ask for a drink. He was always just mixing something up. Like, who needs one? What's going on? It was it was pretty nice. And the cool thing is, for some somehow the days were so jam packed that we still went to bed every night at like 11 p.m. Well, yeah, you're just exhausted. I mean, also the sun just like sucks it out of you. Yeah. You know? But it is really a tropical paradise, and the people are very nice. Yeah. Very sweet, and um, you know, chatty and I kind. There was one day that I went out with just the gals, and we went to. I this know. I was so <laughs> mad about <laughs> like, it. What are they talking about? Um. The men. We all talk shit about the men. I know. Not really. I mean, not me anyway. But, uh... Because <laughs> <laughs> you know what'll happen. <laughs> but, uh... We got a cat. We went to this place called Tobacco Bay, which is incredible. It's so a beach, ev- right? Every beach you go to, yeah, is just this... A- it feels like you're in a Corona commercial where you assume those things are super over filtered and lit and stuff but it just looks like turquoise water and yeah you just see the fish sand yeah and you see these tropical fish swimming and uh you're in this cove with all these amazing caves and and we got daiquiris brought to it It was it was wild and then but you have to cab everywhere unless you want to take the bus and we met this guy named chips he had a t-shirt on that said mr reliable he was a Bermudian of about 73 years old. He told us it was his birthday and that whatever time we wanted to go, he would drive us back to uh, Hamilton. 
And uh, we found him when we were ready to go smoking a cigarette and drinking a cocktail. And he was like, hey, it's my birthday. You guys want to go to the trunk bar? And we were like, sure, <laughs> what's the trunk bar? And he brought us over to his car, which was not a taxi cab, missing some taillights. And he had a little cooler with rum and Cokes in it and then and cups. And so I grabbed a cup and I just held it. And he was like, hey, the bartender's out. You got to pour your own drink. <laughs> was he also then like, uh, do you guys want to help me move a couch? <laughs> no. You women <laughs> we <were> need like, <laughs> you need some savvy men with you. What are you doing? We You're getting into <laughs> fucking cars with the taillights out with I, a man, a, a, a 75 year old man. He is island living. Rum. I was island cat. No rules. You're always island cat. <laughs> no rules. It was great. We had we all had cups full of rum and coke chips included driving us around the island and as we're getting in the car we're like guys are we gonna die like lol are we about to die and he drove so slowly because he was very drunk and Catherine, <laughs> you guys came home back to the airbnb <laughs> <laughs> also no it was not his birthday <laughs> You guys came back to the Airbnb thinking you you had a great story we to tell. We did have a great story. What a day we had. Ian, what an adventure. That was the best cab ride I've ever taken. Okay. It was beautiful. He's a, a native Bermudian, which doesn't sound right, but that's what they say over there. Uh, he told us stories. Every corner we turned, he had something to say. Lies. No, just things about the island. Because like, Joanna knows so much about the island, he would be like, that's right, and add more little factoids. He was very nice, and we all had a great time. Did he have a meter in his cab, no, his car? He wasn't a so cab. he just like estimated yeah, at the he, end of the he trip? He charged us 30 bucks, which was the cheapest cab we've It was a very far ride, and it was the cheapest cab we've gotten. And we gave him 40 because it was his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I love Chips. Chips is the coolest person I met in Bermuda, and I'd let him drive me around drunk anytime. Because in Bermuda, there's no highways that I know of. Right, so but the roads are small and on cliffs, and <laughs> there's crazy traffic, that's all. And there's yeah. like motorbikes Once? zipping in and out. One of our cab drivers got into an accident. Yeah, and we were all like, just our luck. Yeah. Now we're going to be late for cocktails. I bet that was Chips. <laughs> oh. Except he's not a cab driver, <laughs> so if you call the service, you're not no. going to get old Chip. Couldn't be Chips. He's Mr. Reliable. Plural Chips. He's Chips. Interesting. <laughs> In a dangerous situation, as soon as you get out of it unscathed, it just becomes a fun story. So, Catherine, I don't know how you survived this long <laughs> really <laughs> you're out here licking subway poles and you know <laughs> taking cocktails from from drivers handles of uh jack daniels and i asked joanna i was like do you think the laws are so lax here that that's like okay she was no, like definitely not <laughs> absolutely not there's nowhere that that's okay <laughs> that you could just drink a cocktail while you drive around yeah <sighs> in a perfect world Anyway, that was the highlight of my trip. Okay. I think it was crazy when we were like, w uh, when John took us out on his boat. Yeah. And then somebody was like, there's a band playing over there. And we were just in the water, you know, like yeah. waiting around. And uh, we were like, oh, okay. So we kind of like swim over. And there were just like a hundred boats lined up with like full families, you know, dancing around and swimming around there's like dogs on like uh floaties and shit and then a full band like playing paddle boards yeah it was crazy imagine an outdoor concert but instead of the people bringing blankets with their drinks and stuff on it it's like flotation devices yeah some people brought set up their own little bars on these giant floating <laughs> mechanisms i just kept looking at the kids because like there were a lot of kids around and I don't think they were Bermudian. I think they were just like the sons and daughters of the extremely wealthy. Yeah. And, you know, they just like pull their yacht into port and fucking chill out. Or like yeah. somebody else brings their yacht to that location and then they fly there and, you know, Wild. ride around. It's really crazy to see. I 
I saw that a few times when we were at um, Admiralty, the, the cliffs where people go like jumping into the water. Mm-hmm. Some gigantic boat pulled up with all these kids on it. A couple of kids. And I was like, oh, God, I think that's like a sailing family, like a family so rich. You know how there's like homeschool kids who live on a bus and travel the U.S. with their family? That's like middle class. This is like billionaires who just yacht all over the globe yeah well it wasn't a sailboat it was a vessel yeah it was huge it had like its own little boat attached to it that they could take out if they wanted to and then there was just some guy you could tell was who was like running the boat right yeah and in uh you know throwing out the anchor for them or whatever so they could swim ashore and screw around for a little bit and then come back and do you think you could go ever... Go to school? I don't know. I don't know if they, like, sleep on the boat. It seems like they do. Yeah. Yeah. That's so weird. I don't know if I could live on a boat They're forever. just like a pirate family, but not. Just like a crypto-anarchist, um, <laughs> you know, well, school group. crypto anarch. I don't understand. I mean, do you want to get into that? Um, no, not really. I've just been watching this show on something, H- HBO. HBO, about, it's a documentary about anarchists, and, um, that term, they use that, they're just fucking libertarians that just want to, l- like, move to Mexico and be rich and have a child yeah. bride or something. Something's up. Something stinks, you know? Yeah. Anarchist? You can't just fucking take that term for yourself. I think a lot of them are mentally Appropriate ill. Appropriate anarchy. Have- have like, I mean, I get it. There was like some speeches where I was like, I don't disagree with a lot of stuff they're saying about like governmental control and things. But then at some point, I just feel like they have like a a real uh, what's the word? I don't know, like pathology where it's they can't be told what to do at all in any way, shape or form. Yeah. And then they may they always make their own hierarchies and put themselves at the top of those hierarchies. They're just (laughs) know it alls. They're like extreme capitalists who don't want any uh, restraints or any, you know, regulation on whatever it is they're doing. They want to pay people living wage, whatever the thing is that they're pissed off about. Right, you know? yeah, yeah. I get it that, you know, some people are taxed to oblivion on their homes and shit like that. Or, you know, one couple was on the run because of weed and that stuff. Silly. I, yeah, I understand stupid. that stuff. But then they always set themselves up to become these like God figures where they, you know, they have all these underlings and they're like, I don't want anybody telling me how to treat the people that I hit with that a stick. That I enslaved. Yeah, yeah. I just want to have a child bride and a rocket launcher and that's it. <laughs> that's all I want. And it's my human right. There is one woman who was talking about um, how how despicable it is that people exert control over children by using Santa. And if you're good, you'll get presents. And if you're bad, you won't. And I'm like, come on. Kids need to be controlled a little bit, right? You need to use some sort of soft discipline so that your kid doesn't become... Um, yeah, I don't know. Santa is really something we need to cling to <laughs> one way or the other. You know what I mean? It's like kids I- need the threat of Santa Claus. <laughs> To behave, or otherwise they'll become pyromaniacs. And <laughs> yeah, murderers. I'm not, I'm not advocating for Santa per se, but I don't think it's so bad. To yeah, I'm kind of a tr- um, I, I'm I'm attracted to the idea of rethinking how we raise children entirely. Yeah. You know, when you went to school. You get this distance between yourself and childhood and you can't remember completely. But like, I mean, being a kid was insane. Like the idea that you have to ask to go to the bathroom or that there are all these rules put into place by people whose only, you know, authority, like real authority is that they're bigger than you and and they're older than you. For some of them, they inherently hate you because you are a child. Yeah. And I think around elementary school you start to realize that a lot of them are stupid and are in the situation they're in talking to you because you know they couldn't figure out a better way to to make a living or to you know well i went to catholic school my whole life and i have found that there is some real special especial animosity between children and nuns 
Yeah, ones? they're uh, natural enemies. <laughs> yeah, they're like badgers and and um, mongoose. <laughs> what? Wait, no, mongoose and, and snakes co- and cobras. It's like badgers. <laughs> Why'd you start with badger? Could have gone cats and dogs. You could have gone cats and mice. <laughs> You're like you 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 duck yourself. I can't think of any predators. I can't. I don't know what how these things work. You're a predator. That's right, baby. I don't, I don't have any. Um, I'm an apex predator. I basically have sigma male, sigma female. So I don't have any any. But above me on the food chain, therefore, I can't really think of any prey predator. Sigma male <laughs> energy is really taken over the internet lately with this uh, Tate guy, Andrew Tate. Who? You know, the guy who unbuttons his shirt all the way to oh. his navel, and he talks about he's got like a he's from Romania, I think. He's got a bizarre so accent. He said- and he's like, he's a Sigma male and he talks about how women. He's a sigma. You just said that like that's a fact. But well, he is a Sigma male. So what is that? What does that mean? We know it, it's one better asking. than an alpha male. <laughs> I, yeah, it's that would be funny male. to be like, well, I, I, actually, I'm an apex predator. Alpha male. male times infinity. That's what a Sigma male is. Yeah. God, how are people not embarrassed Sometimes I I scroll through the internet and I feel so very insane because these things feel so obviously embarrassing, but they're wildly popular. Yeah, well, this Andrew Tate guy, who may or may not be the guy we made fun of in the past, I think he might be. I think we should. Yeah, I think that might be him. (laughs) Yeah. If it's not uh, him, it's exactly the type of stuff he would say. Just to recap for anybody who missed that episode, he told this story about how he establishes like dominance in his relationships with women by having them make him coffee and then he pours it out in front of them, right? I think he has them make him two cups of coffee. One he drinks, the other, yeah, he pours out in front of them. To establish some sort of... Like, just like, just do whatever I say. Don't question it. He's got like, if that's not him, that sounds just like him. There's, he's got a million of those just like awful advice. And, you know, talking about how women can't drive and, (laughs) and also how he, you know, he's an Adonis and he, he's just a real butthole and he was a laughing stock for a long time. And then I think recently, because his whole personality really appeals to like, I think, 13 year old boys because they're not sigmas yet well yeah they need to train to be sick <laughs> no because they're all they're all full of like rage and they're like i'm not you know women don't treat me right it's re- it's real like incel shit and then he's like if you do push-ups and sit-ups and then you can fuck everything that moves and i have a bunch of fancy cars and so now he's set up like a university like an on online like pyramid scheme where he teaches young boys how to invest in crypto and uh, and insult women and you know well that's pretty cool what if i signed up for his master class okay on how to be a sigma ma- or how i to- wouldn't do it Really? Yeah, I wouldn't do it. I just out of like gonzo journalism kind of what see, to see what I can learn situation. Somebody, a benefactor should buy us a subscription. I don't even know exactly what it is. If it's like a if it's like a Zoom meeting you do with him or something. Oh, no, that's so uncomfortable. Yeah. It's one on one. You know, it must be funny every once in a while. I mean. For me, one cup of coffee is not enough. So every once in a while, he must want that second cup of coffee. And he's like, fuck, I got to do my stupid little power move. No, he can drink it. He can? Yeah, that's that's part of being a Sigma male. Oh, it's so exhausting. You drink as much coffee as you want. Oh, man. Heavy lies the fedora. Damn, we should have done like a real deep dive into him. And like, yeah, maybe I didn't we'll know do that. We were going to talk about Another him. time. But Ooh. like, I found a lot of uh, interesting things interesting advice he's given one of the things he said that i thought was so profoundly stupid was that um somebody asked him about depression and he said i don't believe in depression and Uh he's one of these guys that just talks like emphatically and you know it's same thing with like trump 
or whatever. Same thing with so there's a certain amount of people that will agree with you. Yeah. Same because thing. it just sounds like you know what you're saying. Every snake oil salesman from the dawn of time. Yeah. Just did people don't listen to the word. Yeah. They listen to the the Cadence. confidence. Right. Yeah. So he says, uh he says, I don't believe in depression. Okay. Um when you when you believe in something, that gives it power. Like I don't believe in ghosts. <laughs> so when I'm asleep and I hear a noise, somebody who believes in ghosts would get scared, but not me, because I don't believe in ghosts. So in the <laughs> same way, I can't get depressed okay. because I don't believe in it. All and right. you go like, that's so confusing and right. stupid, and I wouldn't even know where to, what the fuck? You don't believe in something, and therefore... I don't believe in cancer. Yeah, yeah. Like, some people have a chemical imbalance in their brain, you psychopath. <laughs> well, do you think he even knows that? He might. Watching him and, uh, what's his name? Hassan, Hassan Piker. Piker fight was so fucking funny, because I'm like, I want you both to lose this. Yeah. He's yeah, like, Hassan were- Piker was, like, trying to show that he was more alpha, <laughs> and it's like people on the left can be more alpha than the sigma males or more oh. sigma than the whatever males. He's still engaging in this weird dick swinging contest. Yeah, and like it's so hard so to watch him like yell at somebody in his like pearl necklace <laughs> and his hair <laughs> parted in the middle and then like an anime girl poster behind him yeah. and is in what looks like a shitty closet even though he's a millionaire. Well, and maybe it's his like sound room. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It's all so embarrassing. He was so passionate about women being good drivers that I was like, I just wanted to go in the opposite direction. Like, I thought, oh, no, a, women suck at driving. Well, Hassan Piker did get him. Yeah, you with, know, like, he the won. stats from insurance companies yeah. and stuff. Yeah, but I'm I sure thought that's of, true. And I then, and then uh, Andrew Tate had no comeback. Like his comeback was like, Women are bad drivers because, like, that's my opinion. That's my truth, basically. He was like, Could just because just cause you have alternative facts th- I've seen in, like, the limited bubble that I've existed in, I've seen women being bad drivers. Therefore, for me, it is true that women are bad drivers. And eventually, <laughs> Hassan Piker was like, I can't argue with you. Like, yeah, this is yeah. Not- well, Hassan Piker was, well, he, uh, Andrew Tate was like, uh, you just found statistics on the internet. You just believe whatever the internet tells you. Oh my and Tom Piker is like, this is data collected by insurance companies so they can jack up the rates yeah. for sir. And um, I figured out what Andrew Tate should have said. Oh my God. In that exchange. <laughs> okay. Ahead. I'm not saying yeah. it's right, but this is how he could have won okay. the, the argument. Yeah. He, w- he could have said, I will grant you that men get into more car accidents than women. So in that way, they're bad. They're bad drivers. Mm-hmm. But is that the only way you can be a bad driver? How about people who drive too slow or don't know where they're going or miss their turn all the time or <laughs> keep their blinker on or, you know, drive too slow in the fast lane? Yeah. You think too all fast the ladies in the slow be lane. doing that? Uh, no, I don't think any of this. Yeah. I'm just thinking, like, if you're really a true Sigma, you would have come up with a comeback like yeah, I did. Ian's the ultimate. Sigma. I am the ultimate. I'm the apex predator. Doesn't that mean there can only be one? What is Sigma? I am the Highlander. Yeah. Oh shit. There okay. Can only be one. That is true because you don't age. That's true. Um. Well, I don't. I don't really have any p- opinions uh, based on my Andrew Tate perspective. I don't drive because I don't like to drive because I'm a nervous driver. There you go. And I always How have about you parking drive? is a whole whole other thing, right? Like it, there's more to it than just uh, getting into fender benders or what have you. It's There's just something so stressful about driving. I lived in New York for too long. I used to love driving, but... But yeah, it's it's stressful. And yeah, if there's somewhere you need to park, fuck that. I will just leave it in neutral and let it roll away. I don't want to deal with that. Here's, I here's go another out thought with my just friends. occurred to me. Yeah. Based on what you just said. Yeah. How many... Uh, what are the statistics on who drives more? If two people are in a relationship, a man and a woman, mm-hmm. who, who does all the driving? The well, man. More... You know, but more likely to get into a car accident if you're actually doing the driving. If you're sitting at home, you don't get in any car accidents. Yeah. I rest my case. Well, <laughs> based once again on only my truth 
as Andrew Tate sees the world. From my perspective, my mom was such a nervous, like, backseat driver that it got to the point where my dad was like, I am not driving ever again. Like, she would always drive because she would be like, Uh, watch out. And so. And that's why men get into so many crashes. (laughs) Because women are always nagging them from the backseat. I would be a king in the manosphere. (laughs) I can make anything true. I watched uh, one of these guys, though, one of these uh, alpha males Mm -hmm. really get destroyed online in in such a beautiful way. Uh, This guy like really articulated exactly what the problem is with all this stuff. Um, The the Sigma male guy, he's like, you know, he's in shape and he's yelling (laughs) and he's he's, he's having a debate online with this like kind of like fat uh bald bearded podcaster guy right and the sigma is like talking about how like men or uh women like don't respect men and uh you know they just use them for their money and stuff and 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 uh <clears throat> the but man i could just play it here i have it i have it on my phone okay, I, I, I really can, want you to hear this i can uh, filibuster for a second by saying i find this all so embarrassing People talk like adult men who I assume have jobs and some of them families. They're like active participants in society are are ranking themselves like alpha versus sigma. It sounds like little kids on the playground being like, well, I'm actually I'm 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 actually Aquaman and you're ac- and my powers are stronger than your powers. And yeah, it's like fucking contribute to society so well much. it's like you don't even have to do that like i saw a comic book i saw the cover of it a while ago and it was this stuck with me it was a new hulk but he has <laughs> um wolverine claws <laughs> <laughs> like, that's exactly and what it's this. like that's enough you guys <laughs> <laughs> that's what the sigma male guys are doing yeah. the alphas are the hulk and the sigmas are like oh actually i have guns for arms so okay you gotta listen to this uh hold on and it's making us weaker and you don't realize it because you're not in the dating game maybe i don't realize it because i'm actually a high value male women respect me are you saying i'm not a, you, look, look you're trying to emasculate me this is not all right all right i'm sorry okay, I, try. I, was make, I was making like a, i was making a little bit of joke me. I'm just, no, it's, it's not offensive it's just okay, stupid and predictable. I'm, just, I'm trying to say is you think that maybe the reason that i don't have as much trouble talking to women has more to do with because i respect women as an equal and they don't get offended and no but seriously not equal. Well, that's what I mean. So, do you, don't you think that maybe the energy you're putting out when you talk to these women is very condescending, and then they don't really respect you, or so stronger women, or women they that don't are? Make no sense. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And yeah, then maybe, maybe, sense, hold bro. on, hold on. And maybe the women who are a little more put together and like might make better relationship material. Do you think maybe they're just staying away from you because that's a huge red flag? Nope. That's it. Wow. You, I mean, d- yeah. Do you I like was it? Not sure who the idiot was supposed to be in the video so i was confused up until the end because that guy who's talking about maybe i do well with women because i am i respect them uh it looks like a a loser yeah he's a bald fat guy who you could be a bald fat guy and be cool it's not that it's not those characteristics specifically more of like the gaming chair and the way he carries himself yeah 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 he just looks kind of dweeby but yeah no he's definitely right obviously that guy i mean even focusing on stuff like sugar daddy relationships it's like such low-hanging fruit well i think like the 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 other guy the bald guy he didn't do he didn't do like a perfect i wouldn't have articulated it that way but these these guys who are like always upset about what women are doing they they like make a beeline to like internet thoughts yeah who are just you know smashing their car into people <laughs> you know just yeah, driving like along a parade route Lizzie just mowing grubman yeah just sitting on their big fat asses and getting their bills paid by an elderly man or something it's like <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you go to that corner of the internet and associate with these people, and like what the other guy was trying to say is like, uh, I mean, because I'm more inviting and because I carry my way myself in a certain way, I get to interact with women who aren't 
doing the things that frustrate you so much. Do you think this is blowing my mind, actually? Do you think that these people don't even know that there are normal people in the world? Like, I feel no, this way. No, I like, think that's when, true about a lot of people, When man. women complain about men, I'm hearing the same thing, and I'm always like, well, those aren't the people I interact with. Like, he's a DJ, and he only talks to me when he needs rent money, or, like, you know, he, he never... yeah. I don't know. He he subscribes to all my best friends only fans. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, that's the thing where you like, like the worst people ever and you're like, I don't know how are you finding all these people? <laughs> you gotta go out of your way. <laughs> like <laughs> I don't get it. This is a big theme on this podcast. I mean, I feel like we've had this conversation many, many times, but yeah. it's like, what is it about you that keeps tr- attracting ain't shit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just listen to Cat Williams. Yeah, he'll tell you. <laughs> Uh, but that's the manosphere guys yeah. i mean they go in i mean but that's it though those are their peers because they're aggro and you know just do curls all the time and you know uh, hang out at the club and stuff like that's your peer group then yeah you're going to get the opposite equal version of that in a woman right and it's not going to look like you it's going to look like how women can be awful, right. you know? Yeah. She's going to have like massively fake lips and key your car when you. It's the top lip that really throws me off. Yeah. Also the way women smile now. I don't know what you mean exactly. I'll you show you to right now. that out to me. Women smile like. They're like, <laughs> they smile sideways. I don't know like what they one? think is happening to their face. I think they think they're. Uh, it's like lifting their cheeks or something, their cheekbones. Okay. They smile out. <laughs> they don't smile up. But then lifting, it, if you smile up, then that you would assume that would listen. Lift I don't bones. fucking know. Maybe they just. I like, don't know. I think maybe they don't want to crease their face at all. There you go. So they want to look like that, maybe it's the eyes. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want to crease the eyes. Okay. Yeah, because when women hit thirty, they start smiling sideways. Sideways. Not upways. Oh, God, it's so horrible to be alive, isn't it, folks? Mm-hmm. Just smile. Can you imagine worrying about your face that much that you don't smile? <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking life. I mean, whatever. I get it. But Sigmas then, don't smile. Sigmas, yeah, because it's I a saw sign an of weakness. Andrew Tate video where he goes, I wish I could do an impression of him, but he's saying... Uh, if you eat sushi in front of your girl, you're a fucking pussy. Excuse me? You're a bitch. Nobody wants that. No nobody no woman wants to watch a man pick up his little <laughs> thing and do a little dip. <laughs> what? And he's making like chopsticks with his fingers. <laughs> Fellas, is it gay to use chopsticks? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I love how he's it's weak. He's speaking for women. And the, and there are like really sad not necessarily like incel. I do think it's unfair to throw incel around when you're just like you're struggling. You're just inept, maybe. Like you're not going to shoot up a school or or like you're not necessarily angry at women yet, but you're just confused. And those are the people I feel sorry for who are listening to Andrew Tate going, oh, I better not eat sushi in yeah, front of a woman. Yeah, I don't think woman. those people would be attracted to Andrew Tate. You have to have mm. like some real hate in your heart. Okay. Like even that guy we just listened to, you notice how he's already yelling? Mm-hmm. Like they're always screaming. Yeah. This, this is what's wrong. This is what needs to be fixed. And I have four fucking cars. And <laughs> I get my dick sucked every day. And I'm cool, right guys? I'm cool. That's too, the, what it all comes down cars. to. Yeah, it is weird how, like, you can sort of be physically attractive. I mean, not okay. because... Wait, no, listen, if listen. you think Andrew Tate <laughs> is physically no, no, attractive... No, no, no. no, no. I, on, on a le- I will like a shut le- this podcast down forever. <laughs> Ian, wait. Just on, like, a level of you're not... <laughs> oh boy <laughs> i've done it this time like you, you're not attractive because you waxed your eyebrows and you pierced your ears and you have a bunch of dumb tattoos and stuff like that but like just like you, you if you didn't fuck with yourself that much you'd be fine you're not maimed is what i'm saying <laughs> <You're not laughs> you have burned. you have all your limbs sure you don't have like a hump or anything you're you're working at a, a neutral leaning positive yeah cheers to fuck of, up yeah 
it's sad to me that those type of people also really fuck themselves like that they listen to people like andrew tate and just go so far off the deep end yeah just like silly looking they make themselves silly looking i'm not what do you mean like like, jacked like i'm saying that andrew tate pearl necklaces would and like hassan piker would probably be like one on the binary for most people if they didn't fuck with themselves so much yeah yeah like just regular imagine i can't even imagine what his face looks like honestly but you know just not all the accoutrements of a dildo right 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 <laughs> uh well everybody on the internet has to be like a cartoon yeah because it, it, it attracts your eye you know i was watching this thing this like clip of mr beast and this guy was breaking it down and he was it was like a video with mr beast and um Gordon Ramsay Mm -hmm. and he this guy was saying that for every second in the video there are two cuts whoa yeah isn't that crazy and the whole thing is to like keep your eye you know keep it entertained wild and it's you know it's the same thing with you putting on dangly earrings or a shiny necklace or or just like having your ideas get so goofy that they're cartoonish, it it attracts the eye. You're you're there. You're, you know, tuned in. It was kind of funny watching, um, what's his name, Andrew Tate flounder with Hassan Piker a little bit. This is how you know somebody's losing an argument argument when they start going for the low blows. He's like, oh, you're just doing this to impress women and get pussy. Oh, that just came out of my mouth. So <laughs> you always so say easily. It. <laughs> it's happening a lot lately. I don't know what's happening to me. You're becoming a sigma. <laughs> I'm becoming a sigma. You're transforming. <laughs> You're evolving. <laughs> but Hassan Biker was immediately like, bruh, I don't need to do that. Yeah. Which is like so obnoxious, oh, but also yeah. like, you know, it's true. But then uh, he also... Andrew Tate tried to be like, well, this is a very American view and I'm from Romania and Hassan Piker's like, I grew up in Turkey, so I don't know what. Oh, God. Your sister's calling you. Should we put her on speaker? (laughs) Maureen, welcome to the podcast. No. Okay. I'll just. Your poor pregnant sister. Are you going to ignore that? No, I'll call her back when I'm done. I'll call her back when I'm done. When she calls me, I always pick up. I hate how much you two chat. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? You two? Ah, you know. You're always DMing each other. Um, yeah, they're all dweebs is the point. I guess. No, it was just funny because he, he, he tried some wild argument about how, well, you wouldn't understand because you're American. And he's like, I'm not actually. And yeah, then he I'm had from to Turkey. Be like, um, well, <laughs> um, actually, it's because, um. Anyway, I would be speaking of the people who really love Andrew Tate and like are trying to figure out how to get women that falls into that category of people we were talking about before who are gay and straight at the same time. Yeah, yeah. They like hate the opposite s- opposite sex, but they're sexually attracted to them. It's weird sort of. Well, that's what like, that's what that guy was saying in that clip I played. It's like you, you, uh, w- you have all these problems with women because you don't see them as equal. You don't see them as as human beings. Yeah, you yeah. Know? No, he was totally right. It's just so funny <laughs> to watch people like study the opposite sex like it's a wild animal. Yeah, well, I think that's why it's so appealing to young men because they're like, oh, these guys have figured out the cheat codes, you know? Yeah. Oh, you set a timer on your phone and then you do push-ups until the timer goes off and then, you know, like shit like that. And I would just get jacked as hell and I'll have the most amount of Lamborghinis that anybody's (laughs) ever had in in their life and then women will just, you know, walk backwards into my dick. Nice. What do you think relationships like that are like? Because it does work. You I will, think it's very adversarial. You will get a woman just like you who is awful. Yeah, I don't like, think there's ever any full connection as long as you see people of the opposite sex as different than you. You're always going to reserve some of your emotions and your thoughts for your um, your friends who are the same sex as you, you know? yeah. You're not going to, because you don't think they're ever going to understand because they're foreigners. Folks, open up your hearts. Open up your hearts. 
to heterosexuality. It can work. I promise. Yeah, bring back the straights. <laughs> we need to have, maybe we should, man, if we just really buckled down, we could create a whole industry, you know, where we're like relationship experts and yeah. we give advice. We just got to work on speaking emphatically okay, and saying things that almost sound like something. Mm -hmm. We'll sell lanyards with Ooh, laminates on them. Yeah. Be well, like at the fucking IZOD Center or something. Holy shit. Yeah. Is that in Michigan? No, I think it's in New Jersey. Sure. Okay. Women love men who wear IZOD. That's going to yeah. be our, my first panel. Women love men who can cook. I cooked today. That's right. And it was fine. It was fine. It was edible. It was. I was, you know, trying to get healthy. I was working and Ian was cooking me dinner. That's true. Look at us being... A Progressive real couple. 2022 family. Uh huh. While our dog. Pussy stank. <laughs> Stinking it up all over the place. You gotta wash your ass, Iggy. <laughs> you have to wash your ass. <laughs> okay, Ian. Mary Fuck Kill. Mr. Beast. Beast from X Men. And Mr. Bean. <laughs> And you have to play because women love it when you play their games. Oh, uh, fuck. Kill Mr. Beast. Okay, yes. That's tr correct. I never understood this game. I got to be honest with you. Because Why? like when you, when you fuck one, but like you're married to, when you're married to the other one, you're just always fucking them. Well, that's right? why it's so tough. The one you fuck, you can only fuck one time. I see. Um, now, I'm a, a man. Yeah. So am I being penetrated or am I doing the penetrating? Oh, interesting. Okay. So Beast is penetrating you. Yeah, then no. <laughs> then then, <laughs> then, I'm, then I so if you could, fuck Beast okay. once <laughs> and marry Mr. Bean. And you can penetrate Mr. Bean. That's okay. allowed. Thanks. You're welcome. God, if you could penetrate Beast, would you would the answer be different? If you could penetrate uh, Mr. Beast. It might <sighs> Might be, it might feel like fucking a stuffed animal. Okay. Yeah, is that bestiality? <laughs> <laughs> I really wasn't even trying to make a I don't. Joke. Let's talk about Mr. Beast. <laughs> okay. Now, Mr. Beast mm -hmm. is a YouTuber. Yeah. Young guy. He's like 22 or something. Women love a man who YouTubes for he, money. Yeah. He's worth more money than God. Yeah. Like this kid, he's cr he's a crazy entrepreneur. He His whole life, he just studied... Uh, did we talk about him yet on the podcast? Oh, God, Ian, probably. All right, then I'll skip to what I want to say about him. He makes these vid these videos that are like extra viral. You know, mm. I buried myself alive or whatever. He's like studied virality, right? Yeah, yeah. He understands it in on like a PhD level. Mm -hmm. okay. Completely. He's like an expert. I watched some of this shit. It is so boring because he's not charismatic. Him and his friends are duds, dude. <laughs> like it was they're doing basically like jackass style stuff yeah. with more cuts and, you know, sound effects and shit. Well, he studied the algorithm and and all the like technical steps you need. I guess he's for babies. He's for yeah. like 10-year-olds. Yeah. My uh my nieces watch these YouTubers. They're these Russian kids who live in an unfurnished mansion, which is so creepy. And they just do like um unboxing videos every day. And they instead of like speaking, they kind of speak like Teletubbies or I don't know. It's not. It's just like high pitched, like and they like move kind of fast motion. And they just play with like really expensive toys because they're really rich. And my nieces watch it all day. And they have like one hundred million followers on youtube wow these children why don't you get your niece to do it to i should <laughs> just to make a, a direct copy she's so cute too unfortunately my brother would probably not let me exploit her blur her face out <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll do that i'll put her in a little v for vendetta mask or do you something. think if we like put on like costumes and <laughs> moved around this apartment and open like An we go buy um a spider-man uh uh like Spider Mobile or something. I would. Like a, what are those called? Power Wheel. Yeah. And we're like, oh, look what we are. Where blah, 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 blah. would we? <laughs> and and then, we <laughs> but we live in a studio apartment, so we just go back and forth three feet, like. 
They're right. babies. They don't That's fucking right. know. We'll take it on the road. Whoa, this is such a good idea. You tap into markets that are the most lucrative. Make it Christian somehow also. Oh, my we unpack God. crucifixes <laughs> We dress up like Jesus and Mary. Yeah. And we teach people, we teach kids their, their numbers. I was watching this um, baby show on the airplane. Why? Because we were standing in line waiting to get on the plane, and there was a baby watching an iPad. So I was just like, what's this about? Okay. And I got to tell you, a razor thin plot to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like this little girl, she's shy. She wants to go play with the other kids. They let her play with her. Yeah. They let her play with them. Right, That's right. what I meant to say. Sure, yeah. So, I mean, we just do counting. We could do we that. We dress up Dude. as Moses, and we do count to 10. Even we can do that. We could do that. We could do that. I would love to do um, YouTubing where I can like obscure my face and be completely anonymous, but nothing creepy. Just something like that, like for children, where we're just dressed as like pandas or something. Or well, Moses. how would we do that? Like you want to like we wear a mask? Uh, okay, we'll go to the uh, costume shop. Yeah, and we'll get a bunch of shit. Let's do I it. I mean, honestly, I bet that would be lucrative. Let's do you know? it. We're in so much debt right now, Ian. We have you to do are. Christian YouTubing <laughs> for children. Man, Christian is such a great slant. I've been listening to a lot of Christian radio lately. I just noticed on Instagram that like you've been looking at reels for power of self care to look at for things to mock and stuff that is Christian just gets like millions. Yeah. There's just a market out there. How about that one video I watched today where it's like the new thing, <laughs> it's always evolving. I'm always taking notes and yeah. trying to figure out what's next. The The newest thing is like men's voices with like, you know, a rainy day or a beautiful beach yeah. or something. And they have this like lazy way of speaking. And you were like, what, how, why would this men aren't into this shit? I'm like, no, you don't get it. Women are pretending that that man is saying these things about them. He's like, she's at a point in her life where she's beyond healing or something. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's healed. She's worked hard. She doesn't need you. So you either need to get on her level or be left in the dust. And it's some girl walking on the beach. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's me. That's me they're talking about. She's it, bro. She is the best of both worlds. She's that independent, focused, ambitious queen. She's oh a boss. God. She can handle her own. To be honest, she's as alpha as they come. At the same time, she knows where to draw the line and be a woman. She has a soft, submissive side <laughs> with a heart of gold. She's affectionate. She's passionate. Extremely sexual. She knows how to take care of a man. She's spiritual. She's selfless. And she knows the definition of unconditional love. She's it. She's the best of both worlds. Whoever God decides to send her to will God. be the luckiest man alive. There it is. And how many likes does that have? That has 77.7 thousand. But you got to <sighs> you gotta realize that that's not even the OG one. That's somebody like taking that audio and remixing. And, and so it, the way it wow. works on Instagram is the more views you get, the more money you get now. It, they only do this for some people. Only some things get monetized. Do you get money if people use your audio? I think so, yeah. I, I'm pretty was, sure. That was just a fucking video of like a lavender field, or yeah. like a road. But the woman who posted that, she made that video with that guy's audio, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. She's it, bro. What are you doing? That's, <laughs> any, that's the thing. If anybody just described me that way, by the way, I would be like, what? She's extremely what? sexual. <laughs> <laughs> what? Also. She's always wet. God. It's <laughs> yeah. She, she has a in. medical condition where she's always horny. <laughs> she's pathologically horny, but you could take her to a wedding because <laughs> she's a lady. <laughs> uh, Whoever God chooses for her too, that is wild. But that's such a beautiful example of the fantasy, you know, because yeah. he's, he's saying it to another guy. She's yeah. it, bro. Yeah. She's these two men. That's, that's the lady porn for sure. Yeah. These two men are somewhere talking about you. They're, they're in, a, in a way that men don't speak. They're in a fucking Nicholas Sparks movie. Yeah. Drinking a light beer with their flannels on in Wyoming. Like, wow, I finally found the one. Right. You know, I've been looking for a wife by God my whole life, Jacob. I finally found her. She's very sexual. <laughs> 
<laughs> she's kind of too sexual. I got to keep her away from the horses. <laughs> <laughs> but God chose her for me. God made her that way. She's also an alpha. Like, what is... <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's such a good one. That's uh, such a good one. Like, but there's so many. Can describe me as an alpha? Like, aggressive? I don't know. And I can, Here I am thinking the videos about me like a typical lady. Here's, a, here's another one. This is just uh, so you can get the idea of, like... The voice. I hear this voice everywhere. I don't know if it's a robot or a real guy. Zach, I fucking hate this guy. Only got three choices in life. Give up. Give in. Or give it all you've got. I choose give up. That's the theme of this podcast. Give up. Yeah, give up. Give up or else you turn into that fucking guy. Um, Because sometimes giving it all you've got is that. It's that guy. Who is a oh an Instagram influencer via Reels? Who I think who only speaks in like stupid <laughs> yeah God that <laughs> voice. <laughs> Some people shouldn't give it all they got. <laughs> I think that's a perfect example. I wonder Just if these guys the fuck out operate like I operate. And that, well, I'm trying to make fun of it, but I wonder if they really do sit down and they go like, what's going to get the most I was thinking about that views? too. Or, because I do think some people really consider themselves gurus and like, I have so much advice to give because I followed my dream and it worked out or the fuck. Yeah, yeah. Or if they're really like, I got to figure out how to tap into. Because that first guy we listened to, he really understands the women who watch these videos. The Christian guy? Yeah. Oish. He really gets it. Yeah. Well, that's why we got to get into this game. But via YouTube for children. Well, the YouTube, yeah, the YouTube stuff will be easier. Yeah. So we just have to do counting. Okay, we can do counting. Yeah. What if we do counting in different languages? That's fun. We don't need to make it any more complicated. <laughs> okay. We we need to crank okay. out like 400 in a yeah. day. You okay. Know? Put yeah, them on yeah. a timer and yeah, they yeah. just But they should be pretty highly produced. At least if we take a page out of the book of these Russian children. They really have some good lighting, and they also have a mansion that might be attractive to. We'll get some good masks. Okay. Animal masks, like a friendly mm-hmm. fox or something, yeah, and yeah. we'll speed it up. Okay, yeah. we'll just do that. Okay. Quit our day jobs. <laughs> I mean, really, there are so many people on the internet who have figured out ways to become extremely wealthy. Um, by you know manipulating the algorithms and stuff, it's very interesting. I see a lot of women on, online who are like, "I hated my job at Refinery Twenty Nine, and I quit. It, I quit my job, and now I'm a CEO of my that own company." And it's Serena like, fucking Kerrigan. Yeah, her. But there's a lot of them. You know, okay. it's like, "What is your company?" It's like, "I do Instagram marketing, and <laughs> what the the." It's like not really anything. And you go to their page, and they have like six hundred thousand followers, and they'll like mouth some silly song. Yeah, they're like, "You got to post every day." And that'll <laughs> be like a whole post. You know, and then and they'll, they'll talk like, about how they work their asses. Off. Yeah, and they're always doing a fashion they're shoot. Always stressed out because their calendar is so full from working their asses. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> and they're just like lip syncing. What's that TikTok trend where you're like lip syncing a song, but it's like me. It's like a meme, like me when I go to the gym. Yeah, you, yeah, like, yeah. Sing a part of a song that's kind of the lyrics are slightly irrelevant. I'm going to the gym. <laughs> Do you remember that ad for a Ponzi scheme I got today that I was like, I want to do this so bad. But it's just like this girl is like, I make forty five thousand dollars a month on Audible and I want you to do it too. take my class. It's for free. And she's reading a script very clearly off of her phone. I was like, I want to make forty five thousand dollars a month. I don't think that's really anything. I think it's a scam. I want it. You know what you just made me think of, though? Huh. Uh, I'll, I won't say any names or anything, yeah. but there is somebody that we know who um, doesn't know how mm. to do memes, oh and it God. is the funniest thing in the world because they will post like, 
<laughs> you Joe. can't be too specific. Okay, all right. They'll post like Joe Biden eating a hot dog or something. And it'll be like, me when I go to the gym and I see my best friend and we <laughs> give each other a high five. And you're like, wait, who's the hot dog? <laughs> who's yeah, yeah. Joe Biden? <laughs> some of it's written on like the hot dog and some of it's written on Joe Biden. <laughs> It's like, it's, it'll be like me going to the gym and the hot dog will be like, my friend at the gym, when they see me wearing like, my new shorts. You guys eat each <laughs> other? <laughs> and, oh my God. And it's so, it's really it post all the time. so entertaining. I love it. It should be in a museum. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. It's so fucking funny. It's like a Boston <laughs> robotics dog. And then like. It's always next the most to a, bizarre yeah. shit on the planet. And it's like me it's when like, I go to the club. Yeah, me at the club <laughs> when I'm meeting a guy, and you're like, "Wait, who's who here?" Who's the guy? <laughs> and what's the interaction yeah. happening? Uh, yeah, me drunk after three tequilas at the club, and it's just like it's just like a landscape. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be recreated it's so fucking perfect <laughs> i love it i truly like appreciate it me too it's so good <laughs> oh boy all right well that's enough for this week okay um we're back in the swing of things mm-hmm. expect us to keep podcasting to mm-hmm. keep doing it for some reason and we'll see you next time see you folks. next time folks happy birthday i mean hail satan hail satan